and sick. Firstly, we would like to make some clarifications because the side of the opposition really liked the idea of accusing us that we are killing cultures around the world and creating unified world in, uh, in Europe where everybody is Christian and if it's not, it's not accepted. Firstly, I would like to do the first point of rebuttal with the question of further radicalization. So, their logic stands like this. If you forbid this as a leader, then moderates will listen to you, but more radicalized groups will uh, create even more radicalization that will scale in the public sphere, and this will create even a bigger backlash towards these minorities. Two answers on this. First answers. When leaders are encouraging their entire congregation to act in a certain way, then every exception from what leader is talking about is viewed just like that, as an exception. Because when media report on escalations in public sphere, what some radicalized groups did, they usually, for the viewers, present Question. story, then then the viewers stereotype it. Stereotypize. <laughs> they make stereotypes. <laughs> they simplify and view the entire group as acting the same way because they connect the behavior of, it, of the entire group with the ones that are mostly gaining a media space and public sphere space because they already don't know enough about these groups uh, yeah. because they are usually closed up when they come in new cars. No, no, thank you. Now going to this, that we cannot prove that these people will be hated less by the majority because they will still recognize that they are different, they will still hate them because they are a minority immigrants taking their jobs and stuff like that. But this is the answer on that. Firstly, we never took the burden to say that the entire hating process on someone who is different will stop. What we said from the side of the government is that they will be easy, more easily accepted by the moderates that are now swayed by the uh, far-right uh, uh, parties and far-right gruppations in the majority. Now you have the middleman who actually has something positive to hear from the minority side by seeing their effort to fit in, by seeing their effort to say, we are not trying to steal your culture, we are just trying to practice our own, and we do not want to have some sort of war of cultures in your own country. We are trying to have our own right to believe in something. So this will be accepted as the offering of the peace. Question. Now, on the other hand, what is really important here, no thank you, it is that once you are in the public sphere, when they say there will be more interaction by their case, we say no, more interaction will happen on our case. Because of the <coughs> radicalization that is created now in the European culture, where a lot of people are afraid of those differences that are coming from the Middle East, the Islam culture and stuff like that, that wasn't here before, people do not usually interact with them. And once you see some symbols on a person, you're even more disincentivized to talk to them, to hear their story, to see if they're a good or a bad person. The example for this is when you walk around streets of London. If you see a black a, a person in a good suit, then you're not afraid and you actually want to talk to him. But if you see a black person or a brown person with uh, some sort of religious expression on them, then you're really afraid and you're running on the other side of the street. This is how perception functions. And you have to prove to us really hard that people are not simplifying the world around them in order to prove that this is not true. No, thank you. Now, going to the last point of hiding the identity. No, thank you. When did, and this is also my part of constructive. When Emilio comes up and says, well, now your value is hiding of the identity. Now you're saying that the right way to go is to say that these people don't have the right to be different, that we all need to assimilate and in order, and so these people don't get the right to practice their religion. We say three answers to this. A uh, practitioner of religion was never proven that has to be connected to symbols. Your dietary requirements are quite cool to have because many people have them. This is just a preference of what food would you like to eat. The second part of this is about, is about uh, not having full access to religion by this. Let's just say that even if it's not the full extent 
of practicing your religion. This is only connected to the public sphere. And on the other hand, from the side of the government, we believe that religion is something yeah. spiritual that needs to be given to you to practice in, uh, in the way you feel that you're a Muslim, in the way that you respect those moral codes, in the way that you want to feel that you're connected to your God, not in a way that in order to feel this, you need to have a symbol around your neck. This is crucially important, but before I continue, I would like to take a second. So given that kosher is food that needs to be sanctioned by a rabbi, does that therefore discourage people to take in public places kosher options or ask for kosher food? You wear your food in your lunchbox if you wear it somewhere, but on the other hand, we don't see this as practicing your, the symbols of religion. Symbols of religion have a much uh, complex meaning to them than just you choosing some food. We're not saying that you need to hide everything about yourself to show that you're from some sort of minority. We're just saying that, it, uh, that by uh, putting a symbol on, your, uh, on yourself, you're actually taking, uh, taking this as an assertion, as the agency of your religion. It's more putting yourself forward than just expressing yourself. This is how it's viewed. But okay. more importantly, we believe that religious leaders uh, actually have to disincentivize themselves from being connected from other countries where their minority religion is viewed as majority religion. For example, they are not supposed to think about political implications of this because uh, the Sharia law, for example, is the example of uh, religious leaders being politicized. We don't think that religious leaders should be involved in politics. We believe that they only are there to uh, provide the, the moral code and keeping of culture which can be done in a, a simple sphere of your own home. Now, you have to realize that majority doesn't have to do this because in Europe, for many, many centuries, people have uh, practiced their Christianity and then created democracy and they find a way to make this complementary. The problem is that a lot of people believe that Islam and other religions are not connected with democracy. This is, of course, not true. It depends on a person that does it. But the majority views it as such. They believe that these values cannot be connected to democratic behavior. This is why we need to disincentivize from those views and actually prove to ourselves that civic, the things that make us together are the things that are uh, mostly similar for all of us, and that is being a citizen of one country. For all these reasons, we beg you to propose.